Okay, good to see all of you here. How many here have been to Scotty's Castle before? Oh, you have. Wonderful. We haven't. You haven't? Well, I hope that this tour is interesting for both groups, those who have and those who have not. My name is Carla. I'm a volunteer here at the Park Service. I'm here through the Student Conservation Association. And uh, yes, I've been here for almost three months, and I'm nearing the end of my term here. It's been a very interesting experience. Now, we do do living history tours at the castle, and what that means is that once we pass through these gates, we're no longer going to be in the year 2002. Instead, we're going to move back in time and visit the year 1939. And I'm going to play the role of a character from the year 1939 who might have been giving tours to folks like yourselves if you were visitors to the castle back in that year. All right, so what that means for you in terms of questions is if you have any questions as we go through the house that pertain to a year after 1939, please hold those questions until we get to the last room on our tour, the upper music room. And in that room, we'll once again experience a time warp We'll come back to 2002, and you can feel free to ask me any more modern questions at that time. <laughs> you might see more modern devices in there, such as sprinkler heads and motion detectors, but even though you'll be seeing those items, I will not. So if you mention them to me, you might get kind of a funny answer. <laughs> now, before we go in, there are a number of rules I have to tell you folks about. All the furniture you're about to see is original, and the Park Service is looking to preserve this beautiful structure in as good a shape as possible for as long as possible. So please adhere to these rules, all right? First, no touching anything inside the house. The oils from our skin and also the chemicals on our clothing can damage the delicate surfaces inside. So please, no touching. And in addition to that, no leaning. The exterior wall here, the stucco, is also all original, and it can be very tempting to lean on. But please don't lean on that or any of the other surfaces you'll see inside the house. If you do get tired of standing, you'll see yellow plastic chairs throughout the different rooms in the house. You can feel free to take a seat on the yellow plastic chairs if you get tired of standing, but please don't sit in the original furniture. Okay? Now, no food or beverages of any kind are allowed inside. If you do have any of those, I'll ask that you leave them outside, outside the gate before we go inside. All right, and if you have anything in your mouth, besides your gone. tongue, <laughs> ah, gone then? Wonderful. Okay, thank you. Besides your tongue, teeth, oh, thank you. I really appreciate your cooperation. Uh, we have had folks come here and leave chewing gum for us uh, on the floor. So, yes. If I do see you chewing anything, I'll have to ask you to swallow it or leave it. Okay. Good. Thank you. And uh, photography is permitted inside class. It's fine. So I encourage your uh, pictures and your questions and participation throughout. Now, one last thing about the carpets. They're also all original from Mallorca, Spain. And the factory. Mm -hmm. That's right. They are quite special. The factory that made them did, in fact, burn down during the Spanish Civil War. So they are irreplaceable. Please do not walk on the original carpet, but instead stay on the gray carpet runners you'll see throughout the house. You can also walk on the red tile work. All right, on the outsides of some of the original carpets, you will see clear plastic runners. If you step onto the clear plastic, you'll hear a crinkling beneath your feet. That is a warning sign. It means please step back onto the gray carpet runners if you would. All right, wonderful. Thank you so much for your cooperation, and please have your tickets in your hand. Stay with the person who bought your ticket. I'll validate your tickets for you as we pass through this gate, give them back to you, and uh, we're going to head into this courtyard here. Mosey on down into the courtyard. On your right-hand side, you'll see an alcove. It has a 1933 Packard in there, as well as some benches. Please have a seat on those benches, and I'll talk to you folks again in the year 1939. Mm. Feel free to use these blankets here if you get silly. You mean you take your room? Ah, no, not inside, but outside that's fine. <laughs> all right, well, I want to welcome all of you to Death Valley Ranch. My name is Carla Seidel, and I'm from the American Folklore Society. I'm staying here at the castle as a guest. I've been here about two weeks, and uh, I'm here trying to write an article for the Journal of American Folklore on Scotty and his stories. Well, I heard about Scotty about two years back on the radio show Death Valley Days. Have you all heard that show before? Mm -hmm. yeah. Sponsored by 
Chicago soap that made borax soap. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Well, as soon as I heard about Scotty, I was intrigued. And I said, I have to come here to Death Valley to meet this fellow for myself. So that's what brings me to Death Valley. And well, when Mr. Johnson here heard that I was interested in storytelling, he recruited me to step in and give a few tours here at the Capitol. So that's why I'm talking to you folks today. Now, how many here are familiar with the history of Scotty's Castle? Ooh, all right, not too many. Well, before we head on inside, let me just uh, tell you a few things about the history of this place. In 1872, a man by the name of Walter E. Scott was born in Myrtle, Kentucky. Of course, now he's better known as Scotty. And uh, Scotty was very good with horses, worked in a number of odd jobs out here in the western states. And in 1890, at the age of 18, Scotty joined up with Buffalo Bill Cody's Wild West Show. And he rode in the Wild West Show as a stunt rider for 10 years. Now, 1904 came along, and uh, Scotty, he got a bright idea. He approached a wealthy businessman by the name of Albert Johnson, who was at that time president of the National Life Insurance Company in Chicago. And uh, Scotty approached Mr. Johnson with a business proposal. He proposed that if Mr. Johnson would be so kind as to lend Scotty some money, Scotty would take that money, come here to Death Valley, and strike it rich, finding gold. And the two men would then share in the profits. Well, Scotty is quite a charismatic person, and uh, hopefully you folks will get the chance to meet him later on and see that for yourself. But, uh, well, Mr. Johnson, he was similarly intrigued by Scotty, and he said, sure, I'll lend you some money. So Scotty took that money, came here to Death Valley, and uh, immediately wrote back to Mr. Johnson in Chicago, saying that he had done it. He had found himself a big old gold mine here in Death Valley, and the two men were now rich. Well, Mr. Johnson is a shrewd businessman. And after about two years of reading Scotty's tales of gold and glory, well, uh, Mr. Johnson realized he didn't have any hard evidence that Scotty had, in fact, found gold out here. So Mr. Johnson decided he wanted to accompany Scotty here to Death Valley to see that gold mine of Scotty's for himself. So that's what he did. Mr. Johnson accompanied Scotty here to Death Valley. The two men rode around this area here in search of gold and adventure. Right here, where we are now, called the Great Vine Canyon, this became one of their favorite campsites. Now, why do folks suppose the Great Vine Canyon might make a good campsite? Anyone have an idea? Water. Water, aha! Exactly right, sir. Here in the desert, water is more valuable than gold. And uh, lucky for Johnson and Scotty, a mile east of the castle here, we do have a series of natural springs come out of the ground pumping water at a rate of, I hear, 150 gallons per minute. Now, that is a lot of water, and uh, it's definitely enough for a campsite for Johnson and Scotty. It's also enough for Mr. Johnson to want to build a vacation retreat out here. See, Mr. Johnson, he had fallen in love with the desert. He found it was very peaceful out here. Besides that, good for his health. Earlier on in his life, Mr. Johnson was involved in a railway accident that killed his father and left him with a fractured back. And he found that riding out here in these mountains and canyons with Scotty did do wonders for his health. So Mr. Johnson decided he wanted to spend more time out here. He brought his wife, Bessie, Mrs. Johnson from Chicago. She fell in love with the desert as well. The two of them decided that they wanted to build a place where they could bring and entertain their guests. And that was the start of Death Valley Ranch. Construction started 1922, lasted until 1931. But I'm betting that you folks did not come here to see Death Valley Ranch, did you? Came here to see Scotty's Castle, isn't that right? No. No. We came to see the Ah, well, I think some of you came to see the castle. Now, why do you think we know this place is Scotty's Castle if that's not the real name? Mm. Well, that's an idea, sir. Now, a lot of people believe that this castle belongs to Scotty, but actually it does not. 100% belongs to the 
Johnson. And not a cent that went into it belonged to Scotty. All the money that went into it belonged to Johnson. Now, the reason why it's known as Scotty's Castle is that Scotty, he's a man of mystery and intrigue in this story. He's provided the, uh, the stories surrounding this place. And we're going to learn more about Scotty and his story as we take a look on through the house, as well as some of the other stories that surround this place. Now, are you all ready to take a look inside? Yeah. Great. Yeah, well, let me just mm -hmm. clarify one thing for myself. He never really did find any gold, did he? Ah, well. Um, we're going to learn a little more about that as we go through oh, that. Okay. <laughs> Scotty, if you meet him, don't tell him that uh, you're skeptical because uh, okay. he'll tell you that he definitely does have a gold mine here in Death Valley. Well, you folks just follow me and uh, we'll just go on. Just because he never mentioned the gold mine, he probably will always stand right there. All right, well, we're standing now in the Great Hall. And this is one of Scotty's favorite sites for storytelling. Oftentimes in the evening, you'll see Scotty sitting right here in this chair, entertaining the rows of guests who line these couches with his wild tales of adventure. Now, I'm betting that most of you have already heard of Scotty's most famous tale, the one he tells about having a gold mine in the basement of his castle. Have you all heard that one? Yeah. No. Well, sometimes when the guests are up here in the evening, Scotty will send the house boys down into the basement pots and pans. Now the house boys will take those pots and pans and bang them together really loudly in the basement. So the guests up here, they'll hear a strange clanking noise coming from down in the basement. They'll say, aha, Scotty must be telling the truth about having a gold mine beneath his castle because I can hear the workings of it all by myself. <laughs> now, that Scotty is a very tricky character and uh, I would encourage all of you folks Keep a very close eye on your wallets and purses while you're here. Because <laughs> Scotty does have a very bad habit of trying to get guests like you to invest in that gold mine, too. <laughs> Take a look behind you while we're here and uh, look at these sheepskin curtains, hand painted in Spain. Now, Scotty's stories are always a little different from everyone else's. Kind of, if you have sympathy for these stories, he tell you they're mule skin. What he told me was that once he was out riding his mule, and one of the mules got a little extra stubborn. So he said to the mule, Mule, if you don't stop acting so stubborn, I'm going to make curtains out of you. And uh, that's what he'll tell you he did. Scotty will say these are mule skin, but don't believe him. I wouldn't believe him if I were you. Well, you all probably heard Death Valley is one of the hottest places on earth. Have you all heard that before? Yeah. Well, are you feeling the uh, Excessively hot today. <laughs> no, it does get quite chilly here in Death Valley in the winter time and especially in the evening. So it's very convenient to have this lovely fireplace here to warm up the Johnson, Scotty, and the uh, guests while well, Scotty's doing his entertaining. But across the room there, see that rock face? Now, what do you suppose that is used for? Water. Water, aha. Uh -huh. Well, that's a very good guess. In the summer months, you will see water trickling down that rock face. It is a large fountain. It serves to humidify the Great Hall. It also cools the room down by about three or four degrees in the summertime. Very handy around these parts. And uh, besides that, I imagine it has a wonderful sound to the Great Hall as well. Now, most visitors to the castle don't know an awful lot about Scotty. And one thing that uh, visitors rarely know is that, well, Scotty does not actually live here. Scotty has his own place called Lone Ranch, which is five miles down the canyon from here. But even though Scotty doesn't live here, you will see Scotty here with great frequency, entertaining the guests and maintaining the illusion that this is his castle, Scotty's castle. Well, even though Scotty doesn't live here, the Johnsons wanted to make sure that he always felt welcome. And uh, for that reason, they built him his own bedroom going to take a look at next. Scotty actually refers to it as his dressing room. <laughs> right off the main hall here, conveniently, you folks will just lead the way out through this door. I'll follow you in. Hello all over there. Bill Cody. Ah, that's right. Buffalo Bill Cody, whose Wild West show Scotty rode in for 10 years. Now, Scotty is a man who always wants to be recognized. And for that reason, 
He always wears the same thing. If you look on this wall over here, you'll see Scotty's characteristic Stetson hat and red necktie. Mm -hmm. Scotty says he always wears the same thing, so that that way people will always know who he is. And I think that's worked fairly well for him so far. Have you all heard of Scotty's biggest publicity stunt, the Coyote Special? Mm -hmm. No? <laughs> well, in 1905, Scotty got another bright idea. He started boasting that he could travel from Los Angeles to Chicago faster than any man ever had before. So, being good at this sort of thing, he got some money from some other wealthy businessman. <coughs> and with $5,500, Scotty rented a three-car train, which he dubbed the Coyote Special. Now, he took that train from Los Angeles to Chicago. What he told me was they all arrived there so fast that no one on the train had time to sober up. <laughs> well, uh, they did arrive there quite fast in just under 45 hours. So that beat the existing speed record by rail at that time by about eight hours. And when the press caught hold of that story, they blew it up. Scotty's name was in all the papers. But not only Scotty's name, also Scotty's story that right beneath our feet here mm -hmm. in the basement of Death Valley Ranch is Scotty's very own gold mine. Now the entrance to that gold mine, folks, is supposedly right here in this very room underneath Scotty's bed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Scotty is really the ultimate showman and he wants to show folks like you that he is prepared to protect this gold mine of his from invasion. For that reason, he's installed a little device that we're going to take a look at right now. So if you just excuse me. Do you all see this hole in the wall over here? Mm -hmm. Now what do you suppose a hole in the wall is doing in Scotty's bedroom? Yep, maybe to talk to the other people that are in that room. Oh, well that's a very good idea. You know, outside this door is actually the patio. So it's outside. Now, sir, would you do me a favor? Come a little closer to the hole and take a look on through it and uh, maybe tell us what you see. I don't see a thing. No. Is it a little kind of blocked on the other side? Yeah. Huh. Well, isn't that curious? Now, why would a hole in the wall be here with the other side blocked? Well, let's go out to the patio, take a look at the other side, and figure out uh, why exactly this hole in the wall is here. Well, there's an old prospector's proverb that says, two can keep a secret if one of them is dead. And of course Scotty's heard that proverb before, but you see, he does it one better. Scotty imagines that in the middle of the night, not one but two bandits are going to come here to Death Valley Ranch in search of his secret gold mine. The first bandit is going to come right over here by the door. And uh, maybe he'll knock on the door. Now the second bandit will be right over here by the window. And of course, both bandits will have their shotguns ready. Aha. Okay. Well, do you all see that rack of shotguns outside Scotty's bedroom? Mm -hmm. Well, Scotty will take his own shotgun down from that rack in there. He'll point the end of it through this hole in the wall and bang! Half of the shot will fly this way, half of the shot will fly this way, <laughs> killing both bandits in a single shot. This must be very strong. Ah, well, Scotty wants you to think it is very strong. This is known as Scotty's shot splitter, and there's one on this side of his bedroom, one on the other side as well. Now, what do you folks think? Is this thing going to work? No, no. no you don't think so? Well, to my knowledge, Scotty has never had the occasion to properly try this thing. <laughs> but who knows, one of these nights those bandits are going to show up, and boy, will they be surprised. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe Scotty will be the one who's surprised if the shot bounces back at him. <laughs> <laughs> now, Scotty is quite a showman. But he's not the only person here at Death Valley Ranch who's interested in stories. Mr. Johnson is quite an avid reader, and the next room we're going to go into is Mr. Johnson's favorite room for reading. Now, because we do have a large group, I'll ask that we not stop in that room, but instead 
I'm going to tell you about it beforehand, and we're going to make a circle around it and go in the room after that, which is the lower music room. Now, the room that we're going to pass through is called the Solaria, and it's designed with five large windows that you'll see placed according to the path of the sun as it goes through the sky during the day to let in as much sunlight and warmth as possible. So it's an especially cozy room in the wintertime, and you'll often see Mr. Johnson in there reading. Now, Mr. Johnson's favorite book happens to be Don Quixote. And, uh, mm -hmm. Have you read that before, Matt? Yeah. Ah. Well, you'll see tapestries depicting scenes from Don Quixote throughout the house. First one will be in the lower music room, which we're going to go into just past the solarium. Now, look above your heads in the solarium, and you will see hand-carved redwood beams. The, the Johnsons brought in master craftsmen who did all the carving work you'll see throughout the castle on site. Some pretty exquisite craftsmanship here at Death Valley Ranch. All right, now be careful going into this next room, as on your right-hand side there's a low wall of a fountain that sometimes people fall into. All right. <laughs> Oh, you do? What do you play? Piano. Oh, wonderful. Well, the Johnsons will be extra happy to have you as a guest here at the castle, because you see, they can't play any instruments, and neither can Scott. They love to have musical guests who can come and perhaps play for them. Would you be willing to do that? Play for them? Oh, okay. Well, maybe uh, when you see them later on, you can do that. <laughs> All right. In the corner here is a Welsh Minion reproducing piano. This uh, can play on its own, so the Johnsons don't have to worry about playing it themselves. Mm -hmm. And it also operates the foot pedals besides the keyboard, so you get a very wide range of sound. It's quite nice. Now, you see that smaller keyboard next to that one? What do you suppose that's used for? Hmm. Portable. Oh, that's a good guess. Now, I was quite confused when I came here, but uh, I found out it's actually wired to the chimes tower. There's a Deegan chime set out back in the chimes tower that you might have seen, and uh, you can operate the chimes from right here in the lower music room. So that's a pretty nice device. Yes, well, this is the Don Quixote tapestry I was mentioning. And uh, if you look over here on top of the fireplace, you will notice transparencies of two highly suspicious looking characters. Now, who do you folks suppose this is right here? Scotty. That's right. Mm -hmm. And how about this one? Johnson. Mr. Johnson. Well, Scotty and Johnson are two very different people, as far as I've been able to tell, and I think they want different things out of Death Valley Ranch as well. Scotty, he's looking for some publicity. He's looking for attention. Whereas Mr. Johnson, he wants a more tranquil existence here at Death Valley Ranch. You know, oftentimes when the guests are over, Mr. Johnson will tell them that he is Scotty's banker. He's content to fall into the background and let Scotty take center stage. Now, in fact, if you look above your heads in this room, in the redwood beams that surround the ceiling, you'll notice an inscription. It's in Spanish. It starts over here, and it translates, In the far desert there is peace and tranquility. One feels the force of the sun and the mysterious silence of the night. Much treasure can be found beneath these high mountains, and great will be the reward for those who search for this treasure by their hard labor. I think that sums up a bit of Mr. Johnson's feelings about being out here in the desert. You know, there's another old prospector's proverb that says, gold is where you find it. And I think both of these men have found gold here at Death Valley Ranch, maybe not in the form of the metal gold that we're used to thinking of gold in, but in other forms, health and happiness. Now, you folks are invited to stay for dinner here at the castle tonight. Is anyone interested in staying for dinner? Yeah. 
Good. You are? Oh, great. Well, let's take a look at the dining room next. How about that? We're going to cross over the Great Hall and go in that door just past the bookshelf. Who designed uh, this one? Library, and these redwood shelves here were intended to hold Mr. Johnson's book collection. But as it is, they're holding Italian dishware specially designed for Death Valley Ranch. Mr. McNeilich, one of the designers of this place, was sent on a three-month buying spree through Europe, during which time he bought many of the uh, European furnishings you'll see throughout the castle, mostly from Spain, but some from Italy as well. Now, for those of you who are staying for dinner, you're sure to see Scotty sitting right here in this chair entertaining you with his tall tale. <laughs> and one of Scotty's favorite tall tales for dinner time is, can you all see that yellow plate at the end of the table there? Mm -hmm. How it's curled up like that? Yeah. Well, Scotty will tell you probably that it's curled up like that in the heat of the Death Valley <laughs> sun. Yeah. Now, it does get hot here in Death Valley, but I don't know about you folks, I don't see that plate curling up quite like that. Now, Maybe one of you folks at the end of the table there, would you mind uh, taking a closer look at that plate there? I think there are some letters inscribed on it. Sir, would you mind reading those out to us? It says J.S. Ah, J.N.S. on the sides and in the center of the J.N.S. D.V.R. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, what do you folks suppose up next? Johnson, Johnson and Scotty, right? J.N.S. And how about D.V.R.? <laughs> Death Valley Ranch. Exactly mm -hmm. right. And all these. Uh, Yellow dishes here are inscribed with those same letters, J and S and D V R. Yes, Johnson and Scotty do have quite a strong friendship here, and uh, yeah, quite an entertaining uh, evening usually having dinner. So I would encourage all of you to stay. Now, Scotty will most likely tell you that what we're having for dinner tonight is mule steak, and he'll tell you he prepared that mule steak for you himself in the kitchen which we're going to take a look at next. Now, I doubt you'll find Scotty in there because Mrs. Cadigan, the housekeeper, I don't think she'd allow Scotty to prepare mule steak for you <laughs> folks. But head on into the kitchen and I'll meet you in there. It's right through that door. So Scotty actually went to the game room to see the spot. Well, Scotty does not live here. Okay, now he does not. That's right. Is that preserved still or not? Um, well, yes, that's where Scotty lives, sir. No. Um, I mean, is that it? Somebody can go see that? Oh, well, you have to ask Scotty about that. Uh, I haven't seen it myself. I hear it has a bathtub outside, though, where Scotty takes his bath. Oh, my friends and folks. Mrs. Cadigan sent me down here to, to find you folks. I'm Ms. sorry. Nora. Hello, Hello. Miss Carla. My name is Miss Nora, and I'm a guest staying here. And I was, I was enjoying a cup of coffee up at the cookhouse, and Mrs. Cadigan asked me to come down here with this Kodak brownie to take a picture of you folks. Uh, so Mrs. Johnson knows how the tours are going and, and who's giving tours and such. If I can get some of you folks over on this end, I'd love to take a photograph of all of you with this, this brownie. And I haven't seen one of these, so I, um, let's see if I can see if everything goes well. Let's see. Oh, I, I, I see you in the viewfinder. This is good. Okay. You ready? Yeah. I want to take one picture. Do you want to move? Good. Let me try one more, okay? Make sure I got got everyone. Okay. Oh, see everyone. Ready? Mm -hmm. Everyone smile. Oh, oh dear! Oh my goodness! Oh, Mrs. Cadigan is going to skin me alive. Oh, I broke her camera. Uh, I'm going to go back up to the cookhouse, folks, and see if I can get another roll of film before Mrs. Cadigan finds out that I broke her camera. Oh, you folks have a good afternoon, and I'm sorry for interrupting you. Oh, no tour, trouble. Oh, uh, good luck with that. Yeah, but oh. Oh, dear. Too bad. Oh, dear. Well, thank you. <laughs> oh, boy. Yes, we do have a number of interesting guests yeah. here in the castle, and uh, if you stay for dinner, you'll get the chance to meet more of those. Now, here in the kitchen, you can really see the Spanish provincial style that uh, the Johnsons wanted the whole castle to reflect. But, besides looking like a traditional Spanish kitchen, we also do have a number of extremely modern conveniences here. If you look behind 
behind you in that thick wooden cabinet, you will see an ammonia-cooled electric-run refrigerator. This one even makes its own ice. Can you believe that? Mm. Now, quite advanced to have something as modern as that out here in the middle of Death Valley. We do have electricity here at Death Valley Ranch, provided by a Pelton water wheel that Mr. Johnson installed out back. I hear Mr. Johnson has an engineering degree from Cornell University, and he's big into all the modern technology. So hydroelectric power here is pretty impressive. Well, take a look above the stove, if you like. Does that, do any of you recognize that green appliance here? Oh, you have seen one of those before. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> This is a ceramic toaster. I hear Mrs. Johnson ordered it from the Sears and Roebuck catalog. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yes, quite a number of modern conveniences here at Death Valley Ranch. In fact, if you folks would step this way and take a look in this dim corner over here. Now, what does this look like to you folks? Like a water well. Oh, like a water well. Mm -hmm. A well. Mr. Johnson would be happy to hear you say that because he wants you to think this is a water well. You see, he thinks the water well would fit in perfectly in a traditional Spanish kitchen. But, ah, <laughs> I'll tell you folks a little secret. I've seen the housekeeper, Mrs. Cadigan, throwing the trash down there. So I'll tell you it's really a fancy garbage can. Now, Scotty, he'd probably tell you it's the back entrance to his gold mine. You have to be careful of him. Yes. Well, just from being here the short time that I have, I have realized that Scotty is not the only storyteller here at Death Valley Ranch. Both Mr. and Mrs. Johnson are lay preachers, and every Sunday that she's here, Mrs. Johnson does deliver a lengthy sermon that's required for all the house help here to attend. Now, the Johnsons come here only about once a month, and they come at the time of the full moon. They say they do that so that everyone here will always know when they're going to arrive. So they're not here right now, but we have the wonderful opportunity to take a peek into the Johnson Suite. Would you folks be interested in snooping around a little bit? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Well, we're going to head up the stairs to the Johnson Suite. Do hold on to the handrail on your left as you go up. And at the top of the stairs, head in the door directly on your left. That'll be the Johnson Suite, and I'll meet you up there. Where do they come from? Well, the Johnsons live now in Hollywood, and it takes them about 10 hours, I think, by automobile to get here. <laughs> 10 hours? Well, this here is the Johnson Suite. We're standing now in Mrs. Johnson's bedroom. And if you look in the corner here, you will see Mrs. Johnson's day bed, that handy fold-down tabletop. She uses that for eating breakfast in bed, as well as reading, writing letters, and composing those long sermons I was mentioning. Now, the sermons can be quite lengthy, up to three hours in length, in fact. So uh, I would encourage all of you, if you happen to ever be here on a Sunday when Mrs. Johnson's here, to take that into account. Mm -hmm. Now, sneak your heads into this room, if you like, Mr. Johnson's bedroom. Mrs. Johnson's a short woman, not quite five feet tall, whereas her husband is six foot four, I believe, and uh, his bed in there is seven feet long. So peek your heads in there. And uh, while you're standing in here, take a look on Mrs. Johnson's shelves here. You will see baskets handmade by the Panaman Shoshone Indians who are native to Grapevine Canyon. And that's the tribe that did do a lot of the construction work here at the castle. I noticed something the other day, in fact, as I was snooping around in here. Uh, can you see it? It's a little dim, but on the top shelf over there, the rightmost basket, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on the butterfly's wings, it looks to me like there are two letters. Does anyone see those? J and S. J and S. Okay. <laughs> Johnson and, and Scotty. Scotty, aha! Uh -huh. Can you believe that? Even many of these baskets here were specially designed for Death Valley Ranch. Now, if you folks would like to get an even better taste of what it's like to be here at Scotty's Castle and uh, meet Scotty, not only meet him, but get to know that man, Scotty, I would encourage you not only to stay for dinner tonight, but also to rent rooms here at the castle and spend the night. We do have guest rooms available for rent. Does anyone, does anyone think they might want to spend the night here at the castle? I'm sorry, well, there are yeah. sacrifices. Each room is individually 
reasonably priced. Mm -hmm. The range is nine to twenty-four dollars a night, and I'll tell you what the exact prices are. But uh, would you perhaps be interested, sir, in spending the night? Well, yeah. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, <laughs> <a good> idea. <laughs> all right. Well, we, would you folks like to take a look at the guest room, yeah, please? Yeah. All right. Let's head first to our premier guest suite, the West Guest Suite. To get there, cross over the great hall. <laughs> oh, yes, well, even Mr. Johnson's experiencing some financial reverses as a result of the Depression, so he started charging a few years ago. Look at this too. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. All right, well, this room is the West Guest Suite, and it is our premier guest suite. If any of you are interested in spending the night here, it runs for $24 a night. Now, for that $24, you will enjoy a large bedroom, two twin beds, as well as your own bathroom. What about wow. meals? And this large sitting room. Now, meals, if you're a paying guest here at the castle, all meals are included, so don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Now, probably the most notable feature of this room is, in fact, this walnut chest here. Because we think that this chest is the oldest piece of furniture in Death Valley Ranch. Take a look on the front of it, you'll see carved two figures, a king and queen from Spain. Now who has a guess as to who they might be? Oh, Ken. Yes. The one in the front of Columbus? Who oh, exactly oh, right? And who are they? Oh, that's oh, very Exactly right. King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella. And what was the year that they spent Columbus sailing the ocean? 1492. Wonderful. Wow. Second grader. Second grader. <laughs> this chest, if you can believe this, was made just around that very time in 1491. So it is quite an antique piece, and uh, has some exquisite carving work on there. Now, even though this room is full of some pretty remarkable features, uh, I realize $24 a night is a bit steep of a price, especially <laughs> considering these hard times. Now, I'm sure you all are still feeling the effects of the Depression, are you not? Mm -hmm. Well, of course, we all are. Now, rest assured, we do have more economical guest rooms available for you to stay in tonight. They're located across the way in the Annex building, and that's where we're going to head next, all right? So just follow me, I'll show you the bridge to the Annex building. <laughs> all right, well, before we go on, on inside, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the guest rooms that you're going to see. See, you're going to take a look at these on your own, because I'm going to be down the hall in the upper music room, seeing if I can figure out how to work the organ and make it play a couple of songs for you folks. All right, so let me tell you a little bit about the guest rooms you're going to see. First room you'll encounter is directly on your left, called the Italian Room, large and luxurious. Runs for $16 a night for those of you who are interested. And uh, if you decide to stay there, you will have to share a bathroom uh, with the two guests who are going to be staying in the smaller guest rooms you'll pass on your way down the hallway. Now, peek your heads into the bathroom and take a look at the shower head. Mr. Johnson, as I mentioned, is a tall man. and He wants to make sure that all of his taller guests are accommodated. <laughs> so you taller folk will be glad to know that Mr. Johnson installed an extra high shower head, seven feet tall, in fact, so oh, any wow. of you uh, taller folk don't have to worry about bending your knees to take a shower. It's quite handy. Um, <coughs> two smaller guest rooms you'll pass run for $9 a night each. And oh, if you're interested in any of these rooms, are you interested in them? Yeah. Already? <laughs> 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 Very interesting now. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you are interested, at the end of the tour, just head on down right by where you bought your $1 ticket for this tour, and they'll be happy to set you up for the night. <laughs> Great. Now I'm going to meet you folks at the end of the hallway in the upper music room, and be careful going into the upper music room, as there are two steps down. Okay? Now take your time deciding where you'd like to spend the night, and I'll see you at the end of the hall in the upper music room.
Oh, could oh, I get the last person in? Uh, maybe you, sir, would you do me a favor and shut this door behind you? Okay. All right, thank you very much. managed the property for the next 20 or so years until in 1970 it was purchased by the National Park Service for a price of $850,000. Now what do you folks think of that price? <laughs> I'd, say, yeah, I'd say it was quite a bargain considering that the Johnsons put in over two million dollars into the place and that was back in the 20s. Now the castle as you see it today is much the way it was when Mr. Johnson passed away and the Park Service is looking to keep it that way so that folks like you can keep coming through and getting a slice of the cultural history of the place. <coughs> now at this time, does anyone have any questions for me? When did Betty? Uh, mm -hmm. She did not inherit it? No, Mrs. Johnson died before Mr. Johnson did. Oh. There was a mysterious car accident. Apparently Mr. and Mrs. Johnson were driving through Town Pass and somehow Mrs. Johnson flew out of the car and was killed. Yes. Otherwise, they got along. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, as far as we know, there, there were no problems between the Johnsons. So they lived in Hollywood. How, what was Mr. Johnson's business? Well, he was uh, president of the National Life Insurance Company in Chicago. They moved to Hollywood uh, in the mid-30s. So um, I believe they were just having a leisurely life in Hollywood. They no children. No children, mm -hmm. no. Was there a church or well, this very room was used for uh, many of Mrs. Johnson's sermons. So and what religion were they? They were Congregationalist. Yes, Mr. Johnson had a strict Quaker upbringing, and uh, yes, they were lay preachers of the Congregationalist. When did Scotty die? Scotty died in 1954, and he spent the last three years of his life living here at the castle. Uh, he lived in the, well, in Bessie's apartment, which we didn't see, but it was off of the courtyard where we entered the tour. And he continued entertaining guests here till he died. And he's buried on the hill behind the castle as he requested. And when did you say the Johnsons died? Mr. Johnson died in 1948, and Mrs. Oh, Johnson okay. so before that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I can answer any other questions uh, a little later on. I'm going to play one last song for you on the organ. And uh, I want to thank you all for coming. I hope you enjoyed looking through this beautiful structure and also learned a bit more about Scotty and his stories, as well as the stories that continue to surround this place. Now, How did he ever spend any of his gold? Well, Scotty? Yeah. Well, he never had any gold. Yeah, okay. 
<laughs> that was one of his stories. And who supported him? You just well, Mr. Johnson supported Scotty. Yeah. Okay. Now, I am going to open this door as well. That's our exit door. We're going to go down a spiral staircase out to where we started the tour. All right, and I hope you folks enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.